I'm supposed to get married to my fiance in two days and I don't know if I should call it off. I'll try to make this short while I cry of sadness. I've been dating this guy since June of 2022 and in September of that same year, he asked me to be his girlfriend and this past April, he asked me to marry him. So we've been engaged since then and he came to Hawaii with his mom and dad and with my mom and dad, my sister and best friend. 90% of the time, he's a calm person. He opens the door of the car for me, kisses me every morning and every night. He's a gentleman and a very loyal and honest person. The other 10% when we fight, he insults me. Fake, know-it-all, psycho, piece of shit, you don't give a shit about me, this relationship is a joke, and etc. Yesterday was our first day in Hawaii and in two different occasions, his behavior in front of everyone in the table was intense and out of line. He started yelling just because we disagreed that not all Italians hate Americans. I'm from South America and so it's my family and he's from the US, but we all currently live in the US. And then at some point, my sister's boyfriend was like, it's always greener on the other side. And he started getting very passionate and saying, nope, it's not always greener. You are mistaken. Anyway, the whole conversation in the table was uncomfortable because he was way too intense. Even his mom told him to calm down. Then we went to the car and I asked him nicely to please chill and that his attitude made me uncomfortable. He started yelling at me saying I'm dramatic and overreacting because that's his personality. A couple of people from the resort asked me if I was okay after they saw the whole scene. Because by the way, he doesn't care about making scenes anywhere we are. He will yell and raise his voice whenever we are in public anytime we get into an argument. Anyways, that went away and he apologized to my sister's boyfriend and told him that's usually how he speaks to all of his friends. That is not an apology. After that, we were all at the beach, my part of the family and him. And his mom and dad were at the grocery store. We didn't check in our rooms yet because the room wasn't ready. But after hanging out at the beach for like an hour, he was ready to go. And I said, but your mom isn't here yet. We can chill a little longer. He got all stressed out and said he wanted to go to the room and started getting ready to go to Waikiki downtown and that everyone should do that. He was very pushy and also yelled again and got intense with the group and made us all leave and change so we can go to downtown. I told him when we were alone that he was being rude and pushy again and that he should apologize. After convincing him for a while that he was being rude out there, he texted my sister and her boyfriend again saying, sorry I was all intense. Every time during this time of the year when my birthday is coming, I get emotional because I remember my sister and that's not an excuse but I'm just not in the best place. By the way, he lost his sister six years ago. He was 23 and his sister was 10. This isn't the first time he yells and behaves incorrectly and uses his sister as the motive for it. Then we were in the car with my mom and he wanted to apologize to my mom too and this is where shit got ugly. He apologized to my mom and says how he wishes his sister was here in these important moments and that he is sorry for everything from today. And then my mom says, okay, your apologies are accepted but please don't use your sister as an excuse. Respect her memory. She also said the way she respects my dad's memory is by always trying to be happy around the people she loves because she knows he wouldn't want to see her cry every day or yell at us or anything like that. So that's the way she deals with my father's death. Then my fiance said, you don't know anything about my sister or myself and I can get to feel however I want. Things kept getting heated and more yelling started happening and he started yelling very loudly. Don't talk about my sister, you don't know shit. Started giving my mom crazy eyes and pointing at her, completely disrespected somebody that's in her 60s. Then my mom just left the car and after an hour of me trying to explain to my fiance that what he did was wrong, he said, okay, I will apologize to her. Then I call my mom and she's crying and she's like, I'm sorry, I don't want his apologies. This went too far. He also insulted me multiple times. I told my fiance, even if my mom was wrong, he could have just talked to her instead of started yelling and cursing at her. My wedding is supposed to be two days here in Hawaii and my mom was supposed to give us the rings. This morning she texted me saying that she loves me and that I can do whatever I decided to do but she won't give me the rings and won't accept his apologies and if I do marry him she will stand there to support me but after that when we go back home she won't be close to him and will try to avoid talking to him from now on because her perspectives of him has changed completely. I truly don't know what to do. I need an outsider's perspective. Should I marry this man? She has a small update. She goes, update. I've left the room and I'm now with my mom and my sister. Oh, what? She has another update. I canceled the wedding. I apologized to my mom for letting him speak to her like that. Even though I was telling him to stop, I could have been more serious about it. His mom understands my position and respects my decision. I'm really sad, but somehow I feel relief as well. I will try to enjoy the rest of this trip with my family and try to get past this. My mom is also relieved that I made this decision. My whole family is. Am I wrong for declining an invitation to my best friend's wedding? My best friend Anne is getting married soon. She announced her engagement a year ago. When she first announced it, I was in the procedure of trying to lose weight. I was somewhere around 93 kilograms when she last saw me and now I'm 61. Ooh, girl, we gotta convert that. I'm sorry, 93. 
three kilograms. Okay, she was 205 pounds, and now she is... Oh, whoa, 134. Good for you. We don't live in the same town anymore because I moved six months before she announced her engagement. So anyways, she asked me to be her bridesmaid not too long ago, and I accepted. Fast forward to my trip home. Everything goes to the dogs. When Anne saw me, she didn't seem too happy. Something was off as she barely even hugged me. She didn't say anything then, so I just assumed I was reading into it. Later that day, when we were getting lunch at a restaurant, she noticed I only got brown rice and a salad, and she commented on how I changed so much. I only laughed and told her that I was on a diet until I lost some more weight. This led to a rant from her side about how now she feels like the fat one of the two. We have been friends since high school, and she's had this thing where she'd treat me like I was a guy. It's weird to explain, but to put it simply, I'm 5'7", and she's barely 5 feet tall. Because of the height difference, I've always looked heavy next to her, and she took pleasure in that. She used to wear my clothes and comment on how my t-shirt is a one-piece for her, how my hands are so much bigger than hers, and some days how I look like her mother because of how tall and fat I was. This always made me feel less feminine somehow and kind of ugly. However, now that I lost the weight, I didn't look fat anymore and she couldn't do any of those cutesy things. Her words, not mine. And that really hurt her. I attempted to change the topic, but she kept circling back to that and then asked me if I lost weight deliberately for her wedding. Whoa, what a self-conceited ass friend. What the heck? And this is your best friend? I'm sorry. I told her that I'd been trying to lose weight for a while before that, but her wedding was a good motivator for me. I wanted to look good at my best friend's wedding and feel more confident in a bridesmaid dress. Following that, she flat out accused me of trying to steal her thunder. She said that whenever I'd said I was going to try to lose weight, I'd relapse back to old habits pretty quick, so she didn't think I was serious. She told me that I was trying to make her look like the ugly best friend. She then proceeded on to tell me at one point that she was still prettier and dainier than me, no matter how thin I got, she'd always be thinner. She added that because of this betrayal, she no longer felt comfortable having me as a bridesmaid and I could attend as a guest instead. That strung a nerve and I promptly left the restaurant and texted her later that night to tell her that I was not interested in attending her wedding at all. As a result, I've been getting messages from her and her mom. They say I stressed her out and by declining the invitation, I'm trying to guilt trip her. So, am I the asshole? Am I the arsehole for telling my disabled sister that she won't be getting any inheritance? Story time! So I have four siblings and my youngest sister Amy is disabled and because of this my parents dedicated 100% of themselves to her and they pretty much left the rest of us to fend for ourselves. Growing up I was pretty much the main caregiver for all of my siblings because my parents were too busy with Amy, I would do all the chores, I would look after my siblings and I should probably make it clear that Amy's disability does not stop her from doing anything, she's more than capable of doing everything herself, she doesn't require any extra care she doesn't require 24 hours like surveillance or anything like that she is more than capable but my parents have literally always spoiled her rotten and she's so rude so my grandparents passed away a fair few years ago now and i inherited all of their money pretty much i inherited about six million dollars and the reason i received all of it and none of my other siblings did is because i was really the only one that gave a crap about them my grandparents were very aware of how my parents treated us so they didn't really talk to my mom they very rarely spoke to her so i got left it all but at this moment in time i haven't spoke to my parents for over six years but recently amy started college and she burnt out her whole college fund in Four months. Apparently designer bags were just more important than rent. I'm very aware that this makeup is coming very grey. I'm trying to fix it desperately. So for a little backstory and context, when my younger siblings started college, I helped with all of their college fees. I paid for pretty much everything. And my only sort of rule was that they did well. However, now that Amy is struggling, my parents ended up calling me out of nowhere. And they demanded that I gave Amy some of my inheritance money to help her out through college. I ended the call with my mom by telling her that Amy was the only kid that they had in their mind for 18 years. And now they have absolutely no right to demand things from the kids that they literally abandoned. And naturally I'm getting shit from everyone. So here is some little bits of information that may help you form a bit of a better opinion. I have no clue what Amy's disability actually is. My parents never told us or they never told Amy either. And then when I asked my mom why she couldn't get any governmental help or funding, she said it's because they don't have a written diagnosis anywhere for Amy. I always remember my parents fighting about how they need to take her to different doctors because other doctors refuse to give her a diagnosis. And I'm not gonna lie, through writing this, I'm starting to now think if my sister is actually disabled. My uncle also gave me a call the other day and told me that they were thinking about starting a pregnancy rumor that
was pregnant so that I would have to pay them. And then when I said I wouldn't do that, they said that they were going to turn around and say that, well, I'm someone that likes to hurt babies. So, so should I end up helping my sister or should I keep the money and keep putting it into my other siblings? Am I the arsehole for telling my fiancé I won't marry him if he insists on inviting his female friend to our wedding? Story time. My fiancé has a childhood best friend called Amy. Now, I'm not the type of person who gets jealous over their partner being friends with someone of the opposite gender. Now, what bothers me in this situation is not the fact that Amy is a female, it's the fact that she literally cannot respect anyone's boundaries. I would have the same issue if the friend in talk was a male. So Amy has always been in this weird competition with me about who is more important in my Steve's life. And me and Steve have actually broken up over Amy before because he was just incapable of setting boundaries with her. So I ended it. But after that, he realized the importance of boundaries and we got back together and he ended up having a chat with Amy. Me and Amy now have one of them types of relationships where we know that we can't stand each other, but we're civil to each other's faces just to avoid the drama. And this whole situation has been stirring for the past like five years. When Steve proposed, Amy didn't even congratulate us. It got to the point where she even refused to call me Steve's fiance and my fiance Steve would keep correcting her and be like, she's not my girlfriend anymore. So now that we're planning our wedding, we are starting to choose who is going to be part of our bridal party and our groomsmen. So I beg you, please imagine my disgust when I find out that Steve wants Amy to be one of his groomsmen. And after he asked her to be a groomswoman, she sent me this text. Just so you know, I am and always will be Steve's biggest priority. You may be a wife, you may have kids one day, you may share a house, but just know that I will always be a priority to him because he picked me as a groomswoman, knowing how much it would upset you. Girl, Amy has a point. She then went on to tell me that I should stay in my lane and learn my place. So I, of course, showed Steve this text message. And he told me that he would deal with her and not to take it too seriously. But I told him this was the final straw now. And I made it very clear that the only resolution I wanted now was that she was dropped from the wedding and uninvited. And I let him make the call. And now I don't know if I'm going to be able to go forward with this wedding because he cannot set clear boundaries and I don't want that for my husband. He's also said he thinks what I'm doing is very unfair to him and making him deal with everything because he isn't responsible for her actions. So why is he being made to sort it all out? He said he feels like I'm putting unnecessary pressure on him. So what do you think I should do? Am I wrong for not being comfortable with my husband being friends with his female co-worker? His co-worker, female 24, will call her Debbie. Started working with my husband, male 35, will call him Charlie, two years ago. Last September, I met her for the first time at a wedding of two of their co-workers. She sat behind us. The girl getting married doesn't like my husband, but he's on the same shift and the whole shift was invited to the wedding. The girl getting married had called Charlie a snake to Debbie in casual conversation. They're not friends and Charlie is generally a good person, in my opinion, so that's not a red flag to me. Debbie told Charlie about this, so at this point it's a running inside joke that I was privy to. Charlie texts Debbie, snake, and Debbie mouths, stop, all flirty. I did think it was flirty, but thought that it just may be her personality. Fast forward to the shift Christmas party last year. We've been hosting shift Christmas parties at our house for two years. The whole shift was there, but Debbie brings her twin sister as her plus one. One thing about her job is that it's a male-dominated field, but I'm friends with a few of the co-workers' wives. So during the party, all the women were hanging out, except Debbie and her twin sister. She was hanging out with the guys. I assumed it was because she didn't really know most of the women. No big deal. But the next day, she sends Charlie a couple of photos that she snapped of him without his knowledge. The photos were accompanied by a text that said, Why did I take these? LOL. He showed me this in his response, which was pretty PG, but I did remark something along the lines of, LOL, I think she has a crush on you. He just brushed that off. Fast forward to February. His co-workers are all in their 20s and they convinced Charlie to get into Snapchat. I've never been a fan of Snapchat and Charlie has never had any form of social media. After he gets Snapchat, I notice he's on his phone a lot more. I'm naturally a nosy person and realize that it's a flaw of mine. So I notice that he's beginning to talk about Debbie more and I start questioning who he's chatting with. One thing I notice is that every single time he works overtime, she snaps him and asks him if he's working or she'll ask if he works the next day. I tell him that she's starting to make me uncomfortable. He brushes that off. March, we go to a new coworker's house on Wednesday night for dinner party. None of the wives that I'm friends with are there. I also have to work on Thursday and no one else does. Before we go to the party, we discuss leaving at a reasonable time. At 9.45 p.m., I ask him what time we're leaving. He hee haws around and I immediately get frustrated and walk off. He gets mad and decides that he's staying as late as he wants. I keep asking when we're leaving and reminding him that I have work. I spend the rest of the night crying on the couch in a stranger's house. Four people come and check on me. Charlie and Debbie never do and I can see them sitting beside each other outside. We end up leaving the party around 1.30 in the morning. May, we go to a hot air balloon festival an hour from home. He tells her where we are and asks her to meet up. I'm really not privy to this conversation except that I asked him who he was talking to and it was her. We get in an argument and leave before she arrives and then he tells me that that's what they were talking about. We go to London for vacation and we're arriving back in the States for our anniversary. I post a super cute slideshow. Debbie sees it. 
Debbie then snaps Charlie about someone breaking into her car. I express that I think it's weird. August. Charlie says that he stopped talking to Debbie because it made me upset. He's been distancing from me for a few months though, so I still have a gut feeling that something isn't right. He got a new phone in July, but saved his old phone. I let my intrusive thoughts win and I look at his old phone. Charlie and Debbie talked on the phone for 45 minutes while I was at work and they were both off work. I log into Charlie's TikTok account. He sent her a video from Barstool Sports of a girl telling the guy, I have a crush on you, and the guy reacting really good to it. Two days before he sent that video, Debbie reposted one saying, when you're trying to go to sleep, all you can think about is wanting him in your bed. Two days after he sent her the crush video, she reposted a video that says, the most confusing place you can be is knowing you have a connection with someone, but you're not officially together, but you're more than friends. I confront him and I tell him that this isn't an inappropriate relationship. After I confront him, she deletes her videos. He claims that he didn't talk to her about it and still maintains that they stopped talking. Now last week, I decided to check his Snapchat and his old phone because I'm still having a gut feeling. They've been number one BFFs on Snapchat for at least two weeks. They talk every single day. She sends him a pic of herself in her pajamas. Now I'm in my PJs, lol, while I'm looking. It wasn't risque, but I have never once had any of my male friends a selfie of myself, much less in my pajamas. I tell him that I'm not comfortable with their friendship and I would like him to stop being friends with her. Side note, we're in couples therapy as well. During the fight, he tells me that he likes having friends. I have no problem with any of his other friends. I asked him why he lied and said he stopped talking to her. He said because he knew I didn't like it. I feel like I can no longer trust him and he basically told me that he would rather be friends with her than marry to me. I have asked all my friends if I'm overreacting and all of them have told me to leave him. We've been married for 13 years and together for a total of 15 years. 